What we now want to take a brief look at is the organization of the brain. And so this is page 70, page 70 uh, in the lecture outline. And now I have my, my brain right here in my own hands. And uh, if we were to make a mid-sagittal section right through the middle of the brain, which is what we see uh, in the picture in front of us. First thing I want to draw your attention to is this area called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum uh, is the largest commissure in the central nervous system. And we've written commissure right here. What's a commissure? A commissure is a location of where there are many nerve fibers that decussate or connect, cross between the right and left sides of the uh, central nervous system. So in fact, the corpus callosum which literally means big body. Corpus means body, Colos, colosum like colossal means large. This large body is the location of about 300 million myelinated nerve fibers that link the right and left sides of our brain together, that connect the two hemispheres. In fact, uh, if uh, one were to make a cut through the corpus callosum, uh, literally, the right side of their brain would not know what the left side was thinking, and the left side would not know what the right side is thinking. All right, that's the corpus callosum. Now, uh, this upper part of the brain is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is that part of the brain where there is consciousness or awareness of what uh, it's doing. So it is in the cerebrum where we have conscious awareness of our senses, and it is also in the cerebrum where we can initiate voluntary or volitional movement of our body. Now, the uh, cerebrum, if we look down below in the outline, so the cerebrum uh, can be further subdivided into uh, the, the, uh, really the outermost part, the highest level of the cerebrum is the cerebral cortex. Uh, then there is this limbic system, the center of emotions, uh, which we will talk more about later when we look at more details of the brain. Uh, and and uh, another part of the cerebrum or within the cerebral hemispheres are the so-called basal ganglia, uh, also known as the subcortical nuclei. And again, we will have more to say about that part of the cerebrum later, but the basal ganglia or subcortical nuclei are, play a role in uh, voluntary skeletal muscular activity. Now, uh, right here it says the thalamus. And uh, the thalamus uh, is the, forms the upper part, the upper portion of what is sometimes known as the reticular activating system, or RAS. It is associated in part with uh, the waking center. So the thalamus uh, comprises the waking center. Now, where is the thalamus in our picture? So in our picture, the thalamus is right here in the uh, center of the uh, brain. Right in the middle of the brain is where the thalamic nucleus or thalamus is located. And as we indicated right here, it is a sensory relay station. Well, in fact, we've learned that. Almost all sensory information, uh, certainly all the sensory information coming up through the spinal cord, uh, including sensory information from our eyes and our ears, a synapse or the uh, sensory information is relayed to the thalamus before it is forwarded or relayed uh, to other parts of the brain, including uh, up to the cerebral cortex. So the thalamus, we should know, is important in the relay of sensory information to higher levels of the brain, and it is associated with uh, the waking center. It plays a role in our sleep and wake cycles. Now, an area of the brain just below, just below the thalamus, is called the hypothalamus, which literally means below the thalamus. And it is in the hypothalamus uh, that is regarded as the center of homeostasis. Since we know that homeostasis is the most critical word in this entire physiology course, that makes this small area of the brain especially important in a physiology course this is where the temperature control center is located, as well as many other uh, reflex centers that play a role in maintaining internal uh, balance or homeostasis. Uh, attached to the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland, 
the master endocrine gland of the body. And as we will be learning, the hypothalamus also is in control of the release of hormones by the pituitary gland. <clears throat> now, uh, right over here on the back side, the dorsal side of the brain, is uh, the cerebellum, which literally means little brain. And the cerebellum, as we wrote, is involved in coordinating complex skeletal muscular activity. In other words, we have learned that the cerebellum plays a key role in uh, complex skeletal muscular activity, including riding a bicycle, uh, swimming, dancing, playing basketball, doing gymnastics, uh, driving a car, uh, anytime there it entails uh, coordinated complex skeletal muscular activity. When there is injury to the cerebellum, there's an impaired ability uh, to carry out these complex skeletal muscular uh, movements. Now, this is the lower part of the brain, commonly referred to as the brain stem. And the brain stem consists of uh, an upper portion called the midbrain, uh, a middle part called the pons, and a lower portion called the medulla oblongata. The uh, upper part of the brain stem, the midbrain, we have made reference to. Uh, that is the uh, uh, location of where the extra pyramidal tract or extra corticospinal tract originates as they send uh, motor commands, involuntary motor commands downwards uh, to the uh, uh, somatic motor neurons in the spinal cord. The pons uh, is really uh, related to the cerebellum. So the pons really plays a, uh, a role with the cerebellum in coordinating skeletal muscular activity. The lowest portion of the brain stem is called the medulla or medulla oblongata. This is where there are a number of very important control centers, including a cardiovascular reflex center that regulates our heart rate and blood pressure as well as the respiratory reflex center that uh, regulates our breathing uh, pattern. <clears throat> so those are some of the more important uh, brain areas. Uh, looking at the outline below, so we've mentioned uh, the medulla oblongata and the midbrain uh, under the brainstem, the cerebellum, the hypothalamus, the thalamus, and the cerebrum. Now, uh, at the very bottom of page 70, uh, so we are reminded that branching off at, of the uh, inferior aspect of the brain, the underside, are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And uh, we have a picture of the cranial nerves on page 71. Here we're looking at the uh, inferior view of the brain, the underside, and uh, highlighted in yellow are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Now we're not going to test you on this picture. Uh, that would be anatomy. Uh, this is a physiology course. But uh, the 12 pairs of cranial nerves are assigned numbers, traditionally written in Roman numerals, and they are numbered from front, anterior, to back, posterior. Each of these cranial nerves not only is assigned a number, but has a name. So you can see that uh, this first pair are the olfactory nerves, Roman numeral, cranial nerve Roman numeral one, and the second pair, right and left, are the optic nerves, cranial nerves, Roman numeral number two, and then come the oculomotor cranial nerves, right here, right and left, cranial nerve number three, and uh, so on down the line. Now we wrote on the bottom of the previous page, we wrote on the bottom of page 70 that most of these cranial nerves are mixed nerves. And by mixed nerves, we mean that inside these nerves are both sensory and motor nerve fibers. There are some cranial nerves that contain exclusively only uh, sensory nerve fibers, and there are other cranial nerves that contain exclusively only motor nerve fibers. Now on the next page, on page 72 is our chart uh, uh, describing the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 
And for that information, we will direct you to the next video lecture in the series which reviews the 12 pairs of cranial nerves.